with Kip's Corner. Welcome back. And if you're new, welcome. This is the start of the butterfly project. And I decided to start with the fan blade. So here's the fan blade. It's been cleaned up really well. Um, it's got some beautiful, I don't know if um, that wood texture will end up staying or not. But I um, am ready to start on the base. I've painted um, one coat of black gesso up on this top metal piece. I am going to put another coat on, but it's a little tacky yet, so I'm going to let that get nice and dry. And I'm going to start with the base. This is the butterfly that's going to go on here. I think he's going to go, you know, like this-ish. Um, so what I'm going to do is get a coat of gesso on here first. And I'm going to use heavy gesso so I get a little bit of texture in there. And then I'm going to come back in with probably some crackle and put some crackle in some key spots. And then I'm going to start gluing pieces down, um, assembling just random stuff, some florals. Um, I have a window that I'm going to put back here. And then I'm going to go over all of that with another coat of gesso, take it all down to the same color, and then I will add color, color. So today I am just really just going to start working on gesso and I'm going to use a palette knife um, in some spots to get that to get that texture um, so I'm just going to kind of lay it down and play with it and I'm not real worried about um, I don't want to get any gesso in my black, but I'm not worried about much of anything right now. I'm not worried about getting full coverage. I just want to get some of that texture in here. I've got um, a pretty good start here. I don't know if you can see. Yeah, you can see that texture. There you go. There. There, you can see that texture. Um, this is not completely dry yet, but it's dry enough. And now I'm going to grab, this is Texture Paste White Crackle, also from Finnebar from Art Extravaganza. Extravagance, whatever. <laughs> And I'm going to, I'm just going to pick a couple spots where I want to get some crackle right there. And just the thicker you put this on, the more the cracking will be. to see <laughs> just some a little bit of texture lots of white um, but this is ready for me to just let sit I don't use a heat gun on crackle paint because I want that to um, I want that to naturally crack so it just I think the results are just better um, than using a heat gun so this is going to sit, and I'll be back. Okay, we have crackles. Cracks, big ones, nice big ones. Just sort of randomly placed. Some of these might end up actually popping off. Um, 
before it's all said and done, which would be great. And so that's ready for the next step. The next thing I'm gonna do before I start gluing um, the assemblage pieces on is I'm going to put just one uh, layer that is raw umber, a dark raw umber. I'm actually gonna use, this is from Nova Color. It's raw umber dark. And what I wanna do is get the dark kind of down into these cracks to the best that I can. So I'm gonna be using a lot of water, watered down, um, let it, you know, seep in and, and then wipe off. I don't want this whole thing to be brown. I just want to really kind of get those darkness, that darkness down into the cracks. I'm going to do that now instead of later because I, um, after I start gluing things on, it's possible that there's some pieces down under that I'm not able to really get to. Uh, and so I'm gonna do that now while I can get to it. And I like that effect. It'll dry, of course, a little bit differently. And this is this is the first layer. So much of what I'm doing now will be covered up. Okay, my um, base is dry, pretty dry. And I've got this piece. And what I did with this piece, I will seal it eventually with a spray sealant. Um, but for now, I just have a piece of pretty thin chipboard that I just very roughly cut so that I could get in um, and you can't see any of the board from the other side. And so it's just, um, and I've hit all of the seams of the puzzle pieces. And I do that for a couple of reasons. One, um, the primary reason is really to add a little bit more stability to this puzzle piece so that, you know, later down the road, there's a backing behind here where the seam is. So these little, especially these end pieces don't pop off. Um, this is going to go on here, something like this, and this is going to go on the very top. So this is actually one of the last things that I'll put on, but it's important that I have it here with me because as I build the background, um, I want to be able to kind of just keep looking at this and, and roughly where I'm going to put it for a couple, well, one, to make sure I don't completely put a piece down that is going to be so hidden that it was a waste, right? I want to make sure that my pieces are visible, but um, kind of work together. And I also want to make sure that I don't get so much height that this ends up being, you know, way up here. It will be raised up. Oops, sorry, intruder. <laughs> it will be raised up and, but you'll see as we go along. Okay, so... <laughs> The next thing I want to do is start gluing and placing and deciding where I want pieces. And I've got a selection here. I try not to overwhelm myself and get too, too much to choose from. So what I do is sort of go through my stash and just pull out things that I think that I might want to use. For example, I have this frame that I know I want this on here somewhere. And then I've just got these really sort of specialty pieces. I've got a big railroad nail that might be too big and bulky. I may not use that. I've got just some rusty pieces and here's a, a hook. This might be kind of cool to put on here somewhere. And then some flat metal pieces. This is a frame. Um, these are some vintage uh, drawer pull pieces. I think this actually goes like that, but I've got those. Um, there might be something around there. I have um, a knob that might end up somewhere. 
um, you know, who knows, st sort of strategically placed. And then I have these, this is sort of my, some of my collection. This is some flat pieces. These make great background pieces. It's great big number five stencil. I've got more of those metal stencils. This is my bag of pocket watch parts. Um, pocket watch parts really the nice, the circular work really well. And then I've got a bag of keys. These are mostly vintage keys. So there might be a key tucked somewhere. Um, and then I have some of these flat flourish pieces. These are great to tuck in back behind where there's just maybe a hint of them showing. And here's more of those, some bigger ones. And I have, this is all metal flowers. And then these are all my metal butterflies. Um, looks like there's a dragonfly in there too. There might be a butterfly, a small butterfly or two in the background. And I've got washers, um, watch hands. And that's, that's, this is more than I usually pull out. So the, <laughs> it, you don't want to get overwhelmed by all your choices, but I also want plenty of choices. So I'm not going to even use, I won't use anywhere near, um, you know, just a very, very small percentage of this. And then it'll go back and be stored again until the next time. So I want to start building from there. And what I'm doing is I'm creating a cohesive, connected flow um, that'll be behind this butterfly that'll form the background. And after I glue my pieces on, I will go in and gesso all of them um, with a, a white or the cream gesso and then color the entire background. So all the pieces that I glue down here will all be the same color and they will just recede into the background of this. I hope that makes sense. So that the hero becomes the butterfly and two things. I don't have random pieces, you know, just stuck way, you know, out just randomly there. I literally have a flow and a connection all the way through this fan blade that this will sit up on top of. Hard to explain. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, but I already know that I really like this right here. And so I'm going to put this right here. It is not centered. I am coming over a little bit to one side because I don't want this to be dead center. So all of the pieces that I'm gluing here are going to be glued with matte medium, uh, matte gel medium. I have, um, oh, I am, oh, yeah, yeah, matte gel medium. This is Liquitex matte gel medium. It is one of my favorites. And so I'm just gonna start gluing and placing and playing. Um, I will, a lot of the pieces I will just place until I have a definitive idea, but this particular one, I know I really want it here. It, it takes a while. It's a work in progress. I'm building as I go. I'm not just, no piece uh, really is randomly placed on here at all, um, except for maybe this first one. It Even this one though, um, is here and it's going to be here for a reason. So there's a lot of thought process um, that goes into this. And this is kind of what, this is the part that actually takes me anyway, the most amount of time. Cause I wanna take my time. I think that was about here. And I just am constantly going to be picking this piece up and looking at where it goes in relationship to the piece that I'm putting down. So I'm gonna go a little lower. Um, and then once I have all the globs on here, you know, once I've got it squished down and I'm, I'm a little globby, that's when I will take my, um, this is starting to fall apart. I'll take my, um, silicone spatula and just get rid of some of that excess. and then make sure it's straight and then move on.
Okay, I think I've got my piece ready to start gluing. Now this doesn't mean I won't change my mind because um, I absolutely will and I may add more as I go along but let me see if I can you can begin to see what I've got going on here <laughs> just right now it just looks like a big mess it looks like I just dropped everything down there but I didn't I assure you I did use some um, some decision process this is really cool. Um, yeah. So anyway, I'm going to remove my butterfly completely, take a picture of this, and then start gluing these pieces down. I'll glue these pieces down and then let them dry completely. Usually I'll just let them sit overnight. And then I'll come back in and go over all of this with a coat of gesso and um, then begin to, to add color. So I'll be back. Okay, we've got all of our parts and pieces glued down and a coat of gesso over everything. And then I decided to go in and add some, um, just a little spots of book pages. And so this is what we have so far. And it's kind of hard, you know, everything's beginning to blend in now, but when um, when it's done, it won't. Okay, and I've got, you know, I got some gesso on the black up here. This will be the last piece I go, and I was playing with wax just to kind of get an idea of what color I wanted to put up there. This will be the last piece I put, I deal with. Um, so I can drip on it, you know, get little, <laughs> get gesso on it and stuff like that and, and not, not worried about it. Then the butterfly, I've got some risers in the back here. And this, it goes in one spot, sort of very strategic. <laughs> Fits right in one spot, and it'll be something like this. So there you go. All right, next step. Let me set this aside. I don't want to get paint on my butterfly. That's also one of the last things I will do. So before I do anything to the top or the butterfly or any of that, what I want to do next is add, start adding some color. So I'm going to, I'm, I'm looking for a color that is sort of in this world here, this, these kind of these tealy colors on the back, and then I will go back over that um, to sort of age it and antique it a little bit. And so what I did, uh, I've got three completely different kinds of paint, which is fine. You can mix them. I have Payne's Gray in just regular acrylic. I have turquoise uh, in golden high flow of, of fluid, high flow acrylics. Sorry, can't read. And then I've got avocado green in the liquid acrylic from Finnebar. So these three colors are going to mix, I believe, into what I'm looking for. I wanna do all of this color and then I want to, um, oops, well, um, let that completely, completely dry before I move on. We're starting off messy, aren't we? Okay, so I'm just gonna mix up a healthy amount, honestly. I'm gonna get the, blue, the turquoise and the, um, Payne's gray going first, and then I'll adjust that teal color to get a little bit of that green in there. So I'm just gonna mix, this is way more than I need, but that's all right. It won't go to waste. Just add in a little gesso, that might be too much. Now we're starting to see that color. Um, and I want to, now I want to get a touch of that green in there. So let's see how we're doing here. I think I like that. Yes. Okay. Here we go. <laughs> we're just going to start dabbing all over. I'm just going to go all through, drop down into the bottom parts of some of this. I'm just going to try to touch all of the pieces. <laughs>
I am getting ready to get to the next phase of this. I've gone over this with my mix of teal, and then I went back over the top of that with some um, raw umber acrylic. I was using the Nova Color Raw Umber Dark with water added to it, and did sort of another wash over it, wiping some spots. And then I went over it with dry brushing, and you can see some of the whiter on top, and that is um, Golden's Titan Buff. And I just dry brushed a little heavier in some areas, lighter in others. And so the dry brushing on top just kind of pulls, pulls my colors in a little closer to each other and ages it up a little bit more. And I used the Titan Buff because I wanted to kind of get a little bit of this kind of creamy color in the background. Now this goes on here somewhere like this. It fits like a little puzzle piece, <laughs> something like that. And now you can see here where we're at the edge of the puzzle that that color is, it's not dead on, but it's pretty close to the color that was in the background of the puzzle. And there's not a lot of it here, but my idea was that that helps sort of extend this out like it was originally all one piece. But now what I wanna do is I wanna take, especially the brown, and perhaps this, oh, this kind of ochre color, golden color. And now I want to darken this back up a little bit in the background to, so that the butterfly itself feels like it goes more. I don't know if that makes sense or not, but that's the idea. Okay, I thought I was recording and I wasn't. So let me go back over what I was just doing. Focusing my attention down here in this bottom area, I'm using three different waxes. I'm using Ochre. It's a matte wax by Prima Marketing for Finnebar. I'm using also Prima Marketing Finnebar uh, Bronze Age, and this is a really old, but I still have, you know, <laughs> I still have some. Um, and then I'm also using Gilder's, waxed, or Gilder's Paste Wax in Rust. So I went over it with Bronze Age first in some key spots, and then I went um, over it with some ochre, and then I went over it with some uh, rust. And so that's kind of where I am now, It's just playing with the rust and um, just kind of getting a good feel for, and then I may go back and do a little bit more Bronze Age. So I'm just kind of going back and forth um, with different waxes in different spots. If I get too heavy in one spot, I'll go back over it with a different color and so on and so forth. So there's not a right or a wrong to this. Just play until, you know, just play <laughs> until you like it. You can keep layering and keep going, go over areas and back over areas and you can just keep playing until you like it. Oh, down here. And I could keep doing this, you know, I could just keep going and keep going and keep going and keep going. <laughs> but um, at some point I have to say, okay, that's good enough. There's no such thing as perfection. So at some point I just have to say, I think I'm happy with that. I'm going to use this pan pastel in umber extra dark so it is almost black but not quite so you can see it's really dark and i think and again i'm going to come over here and test this out in an area where um, I know it's going to be covered up just to see if I like it and that's giving me that shadow so I'm going to keep playing and I really want the point there we go And I might, you've got to be careful here. I don't want to get it too heavy or 
But the beauty of the soft pastel is that if I do, it'll be easy to blend it out. So hopefully that's showing up for you. It may not be very dark from your perspective, but from mine, it's getting plenty dark. And I'm gonna blend that in pretty well. Um, I'm gonna come in here to some spots like this. Down here, let's see, let me scoot up a little bit. So now I'm down here. And that hopefully, you can see how that darkened that up. So now I'm just working on shadows. And I'm gonna kind of get some shadowy effect, hopefully, on most of this. And then blend it in. There's other ways to do this. I just really like the softness of a soft pastel. And I also like this really dark color here because I think it'll help darken up the whole thing, which is a little bit about what I wanted to do. And then what I think I'll do is I think I will also, and I'll test this down here at the bottom. Let me see if I can scoot this up a little bit more. I think what I'll also do is use this color for the edge, like that. And then I'll come in like so. You can see, hopefully you can see that. And like I said, since I'm using soft pastel, I will definitely, um, definitely seal this before I put the butterfly on. So it almost looks like I'm edging this in a black, but it's not, it's a dark brown. And she's done. Okay, um, I got really sort of deep into this as I was finishing it off and didn't turn my um, camera on to record. So I don't remember where I left off um, because I haven't gone back to look at the footage yet, but. I can tell you that after I painted, after I did this sort of turquoisey color here in the background, I went back over it with um, just a, a wash, if you will, of light umber, excuse me, raw umber. And then I, then I went back over spots with the Metalink Bronze Age and uh, I think it, maybe a little bit of vintage gold um in you know in spots did some dry brushing with white uh, actually it was more of the the titan buff dry brushing and then i edged the whole uh let's see then i went in with some soft pastels and put some dark um, color around the pieces to create shadows um and then just you know just sort of generally played with that background then on the, and then I, um, I painted the very, very back of it black. Whoops. So it's got some, looks like they've got some glue on it. Um, and the sides are black. And then I went around the edge with some, uh, soft pastel in black too. It's just to sort of give it that, you know, if you can kind of see finishing off that edge a little bit. And then I, on this piece, and then I sprayed this whole thing with a matte sealant. Then on this piece, I went around the edge of the puzzle pieces with just a brown or that raw umber paint. Um, the puzzles, the inside, the core of the puzzle is a gray. And so I wanted to darken that up a little bit and then used some ink and went around the edge with a couple different colors of ink and then a little bit of a um, patina wax just to get a little bit of that patina color kind of in um, on top of the puzzle. So you can kind of see some of that. And then of course this, 
this coloring is already there. So the idea is if you kind of look here, the color of the puzzle just sort of blends in with the background. And then the butterfly stands out. So here's the whole thing, I'll go slow. So you've got the very top and there are holes up here in this top piece where it would have affixed to the fan that will create a great um, run some jute or whatever through that to hang it on the wall. But I did not, otherwise I did not put any hanger on there. You can see the texture. And there's some nice big cracks down there. Pieces peeking out. And that is the whole piece. Let's see, I can come up. Let me see if I can come up a little bit higher. Bear with me. Come up a little bit higher. There you go. I think you can see the whole, the whole thing now. If you can kind of see the tips of my fingers, that's the very, very edges. So this is done. It actually goes this way. <laughs> but this is done, and I really appreciate you coming along for the ride. This is the first project in my um, Butterfly Project series. There'll be, I think, five or six in all. Um, the next piece I'm going to get started on, I think, is going to be the journal. Um, maybe, maybe not. We'll see. But the fan blade project piece is now done. So thanks for watching. I'll be back. Bye-bye.